This podcast, Traveling at the Speed of Lightness, is another podcast in a series of podcasts taken from the lectures of Dr. Gregory T. Lawton at the Blue Heron Academy of Healing Arts and Sciences from 1980 to 2021. Dr. Lawton founded the Blue Heron Academy in 1980 as a free school for women in transition who were victims and survivors of rape, incest, and domestic assault. Since that year, thousands of students have learned the practice of true traditional health care at the Academy and have gone on to establish practices serving the health care needs of their patients. Dr. Lawton is a licensed chiropractor, napropath, and acupuncturist as well as a certified naturopath. Welcome. My name is Chrissy Dawn, and in this podcast, we are going to explore the deep connections between nature, spirituality, and health. Traveling at the Speed of Lightness This lecture is about my two passions, nature and the martial arts. I have combined the two into a unique form of cross-training for the last 60 years. I approach nature and training in nature with a gentle philosophy. A spirituality that is born of the awareness that God is reflected in nature and is discovered in the diligent study of and immersion in the natural environment around us. These passions of mine, nature and the martial arts, have led me to the solace of beautiful places and priceless personal experiences and insights. As a frequent traveler along the road less traveled, I have learned to travel light, go to remote places, and to leave no trace behind. I have watched with keen interest the evolving growth and development of the exercise sciences and I have witnessed them transforming into both arts and sciences that reflect many of the concepts, values, and philosophies that I have personally learned, studied, and practiced over the last 60 years. I have been fortunate, and indeed blessed in my life, to have been introduced at an early age to exercise and martial arts in the natural environment. My teachers inculcated within me a holistic philosophy and approach to the art and science of exercise. It is just plain luck that as a young man I listened to my teachers and dedicated myself to this training, and that I personally persevered through decades of study and conditioning related to the art and science of exercise and the martial arts. Holism is based upon the philosophy that to only train to strengthen the body is to train a corpse. It is essential to balance physical training with mental health and wellness, along with attention to the development of virtues and attributes of the human soul. This constitutes a holistic approach to the art and science of exercise and training of the body, mind, and spirit. Had I solely focused my training on conditioning my body, as many do. I probably would have stopped my training many years ago and joined the masses of aging Americans who are grossly unhealthy, obese, and suffer from a pandemic of degenerative diseases. Statistics indicate that 86% of Americans who start an exercise training program quit within a year. Only 10% of Americans engage in meaningful, regular exercise, and of this group, less than 2% dedicate themselves to consistent, long-term training and sports activities. This is a tragic situation, since exercise is arguably the single most important factor in maintaining health and wellness. But of these three components of the human being, body, mind, and spirit, I would personally choose spirit as the most vital element for good health. Of course, it is difficult to be spiritual in a diseased body or with a depressed mind or chaotic emotional state. Exercise is a vital and essential component of human health and well-being. To motivate a long-term and meaningful dedication to the discipline of exercise, It is important to instill within our students, clients, and patients a lasting sense of purpose. From the first moment that I saw the desert, I got it. 
I understood the subtle life that permeated every pore and every rock and every crevice. I witnessed the hidden life within the desert and its latent pregnancy bursting with life and the evidence of water at every level. In short, I fell in love and I had to go there or waste away for the thirst of it. In the early 1970s, the area around Apache Junction, Arizona, and the Superstition Mountains became my playground. I especially loved hiking, camping, and martial art training around Fish Creek Hill along the Apache Trail. Further down the Apache Trail, and east of Tortilla Flats, the road drops down a few hundred feet and makes a sharp hairpin turn. There's a beautiful shaded area along a wash where there's a grove of cottonwood trees that is a perfect place to practice Tai Chi Chuan. To travel to the many difficult to reach, remote, but breathtakingly beautiful locations in Arizona, I bought an off-road motorcycle. I used it to take me deep into desert washes and to position me for long day hikes across the desert floor. Here, you share the desert with jackrabbits, lynx, mountain lions, coyote, mule deer, and javelina. On several occasions, one or more of these animals visited me while I was practicing my Tai Chi Chuan. On one hiking trip into the Grand Canyon, not far from the Bright Angel Trail, a mountain lion approached as I was performing Tai Chi Chuan and roared at me. That lion's roar penetrated through me like I was rice paper. From that lion, I learned the power of sound and the ki the battle cry of the samurai. During this time, I was living in Mesa, Arizona, and I began to train in the sport of freediving. I also was training in Kosho Ru Kenpo Jiu Jitsu at Thomas Connors School Treco International. I was very interested in Eastern philosophy and meditation, and I recognized that the discipline of freediving could complement my training in meditation. My first freediving training began in a swimming pool and then extended to the Pacific Ocean off the coasts of California and Maui. Later, after I had relocated to Duluth, Minnesota, I was afforded many opportunities to hike up and down the coastal shoreline of another great body of water called Lake Superior. Lake Superior can be a dangerous body of water. The average water temperature is about 40 degrees. I did not find Lake Superior to be all that inviting as an area for freediving, because the deeper you go down into the water, the colder the water temperature is. So, I began hiking and exploring the many rivers and streams that entered Lake Superior from the eastern boundary of Minnesota. Many of these rivers and streams form waterfalls and cascades that rapidly drop from the cliffs to the shores of Lake Superior. These waterways make an excellent playground for a freediver and swimmer. The standard gear for a freediver and swimmer are fins, a mask, and a full body wetsuit, appropriately thick for the water and air temperatures. I soon discovered that hundreds of feet of nylon rope became very helpful in turbulent whitewater. I began my exploration of these rivers, streams, cascades, and waterfalls by hiking up their shoreline trails. I then started to swim and dive in the cascades and under the waterfalls. Some of the white water below the waterfalls was so turbulent that I could not swim up it, so I devised a plan for white water swimming. I began to hike up above the waterfalls with several hundred feet of nylon rope. I tied one end of the rope to a tree along the shoreline and the other end to an empty and sealed one-gallon milk jug. I would throw the milk jug into the river and then walk back down below the waterfall to find it. Once I had the rope, I used it to pull myself up the white water and to the waterfall. I spent many afternoons swimming in white water, cascades, and at the foot of waterfalls, and then soaking up the sun on flat rocks surrounded by rushing water. 
My adventures in water continued to evolve as a natural expression of my curiosity, adventurousness, and love of nature. I also began to swim long distances, up rivers, around the shores of lakes, and into and through swamps. My favorite time to swim up these waterways was in the early morning, just before sunrise, or late at night during the full moon. I learned the hard way to wear wetsuits thick enough to resist mosquito bites, and I made a makeshift waterproof backpack out of a plastic bag and nylon cord. I also traveled up these waterways with a waterproof camera. I learned that fish in freshwater are not afraid of an underwater swimmer, just as saltwater fish are not afraid of divers in the ocean. I have experienced the magic of swimming beside river otters and deer, and from the deer I learned a new leg kick for swimming. So, how do I physically, mentally, and spiritually relate these experiences to my training in the martial arts? Tai Chi Chuan is a form of moving meditation. I approach the wilderness as a meditative experience, and I move within it in the same manner that I perform Tai Chi Chuan. When hiking in the desert, across rugged terrain, in the stifling 110 degree plus heat of summer, I move slowly and conserve my energy for the long trail ahead. When training in the wilderness, and I am graced by the beauty, power, and presence of curious animals, I feel a deep connection and sense of oneness with them. Swimming out in the ocean and diving into its depths requires a profound meditative preparation, mental focus, and breath control that is equal to or greater than that experienced in yoga, Tai Chi Chuan, or Tao Yin. All this activity requires a fearlessness, spontaneous creativity, and playfulness that epitomizes the highest levels of martial art training. Finally, the natural world, while we are at play in the gardens of God, serves as a metaphor of life that symbolizes our physical, mental, and spiritual journey. Looking back, I journeyed over 60 years on solitary journeys and explorations. But now I see that not only have many like-minded explorers and lovers of nature caught up with me on this path, but they have passed me. I wish you one and all Godspeed. This has been another in a series of podcasts based upon lectures from the Blue Heron Academy. I hope that you have enjoyed this podcast and will return for more of our upcoming presentations. Until next time, journey on and stay healthy.